Okay. I learned two things while I was doing this. One, never tell Debbie you're doing something from her classes. <laughs> because you will find yourself up here. And never tell her that you like it. Because so, that's exactly what happened. I love mixes. I never thought I would. I not the type of person that opens a box and makes things. I love to make things from scratch and homemade. And a lot of the reason why is because in our house we have some dietary needs. And a lot of those boxes, mixes, even if you doctor it up, don't meet those needs. Especially if you have salt um, issues, if you have cholesterol issues, those types of things. Um, so I was never that type. So when I, I can't really come to her classes very often. And you can tell why. My husband doesn't usually get home and uh, they'll, they'll end up disappearing later on because he's going to come pick them up. But I'm lucky enough, I actually get to view all the videos. So I was viewing this particular video from last year and thought, wow, I'm going to give it a shot. So that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. Okay came up with a couple of things. One is, we're going to talk about how we can actually get away from your raw products. Okay, Not get away, because we all need them, but how to take your raw products in your pantry, in your refrigerator, and actually have this click. Oh, it's not working. Okay. And have it look like this. Meals ready for you to go. Homemade, by scratch, and you just add a few items. Okay, that is the way to go, in my opinion, if you want something fast and convenient and something healthy okay, that you've put together yourself, that your family will enjoy. Okay? This is not my pantry, by the way. <laughs> Mine doesn't, that's what I would love for it to look like. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like that. So. Five top reasons why you would want to do something like this. Who would want to spend their time and effort and money to do this? I can go to the store and just buy the mix. You know, if I get them on sale and have a coupon, you can get them for 30 cents a box, right? Well, these are the reasons. One is, it is still more cost efficient if you do it yourself, even if you only pay 30 cents for the box, okay? Um, the second one is, it actually longer shelf life. Okay, a lot longer shelf life. The boxes, if you ever buy that and look, look at the expiration, some actually have a six month expiration, some a year. Actually, if you box it correctly and take out the air, it can last for years in your pantry. Michael, leave the box away. It's not a box. I mean, leave the box away. The next reason is it's great for camping. I never thought about it. How many of you guys camp? How many of you, when you camp, you take the biscuit with you, you take water with you, you take milk, you take the eggs, you take all of this stuff with you, and the eggs break. It always happens to me. The eggs break all the time. What this is why. <laughs> that is why. That is why this is so handy because you can take these mixes. You can take these. I'm going to show you different ways you can actually um, put them together. You can just take them with you like that. Make sure you have water or whatever you need to add to it, and you're done. So if you're going camping for two or three days, that's six meals. And there's six packages. That's it. That will really save you, save you some space and time. <clears throat> Saving time. <laughs> that was the next one. And you can modify it to your to your family needs. Okay. And the last, the top one is because it's fun. This is Brittany actually helping me in the kitchen doing this, preparing some of these mixes. Right. She wants to see your kitchen. <laughs> Then we ask where to start. That's what my big thing is. Okay, this sounds great, wonderful, terrific, but how do I get from point A to point Z? What are the points in between? Well, the first thing I did was I bought a book. This is the book. I have it up here. I only bought one book at the time because I wasn't sure if I was going to be successful at it, and I didn't want to spend a lot of money into an investment. I did what anyone else would do. I bought it. I read it. Enthusiastically, I read it. I became overwhelmed instantly, and I put it back on the shelf. Okay, so a few months later, I said, "Okay, I really need to do this." So I took it out, dusted it off, and decided that I needed to use 
my own recipes. My kids are particular, are so particular about what they eat. And so is my husband. There's just certain things that they just forget. My kids don't like hot dogs. My kids don't like hot dogs, you know? So they're very, very picky. So I wasn't gonna go from relearning what they would like and what they wouldn't like. I wasn't, no, that's just too much work. It's just not gonna happen. So I took my own recipes and converted them into mixes. And that's all that I use. That's all I use in my recipes. Oh, yeah. So the first thing we're gonna cover, because this is kind of a little backwards than what I had planned, but then it needs to bake. So we're gonna bake a cake together. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna make a streusel cake. I call it coffee cake with my kids around when they say, but there's no coffee in it, I mean, we can't say it. So it's a streusel cake is what we're going to make together. This, um, this is my quick mix. I have it in your handout. This is what I use. This is the recipe that I use. I mix all of that. I mix that together. Outline, with those outlines at the front? Are the outlines? Yeah, I don't know. I'll go check. Okay. So I put that quick mix together. These items, there aren't many items. Four items. That's it. I put it in here. I sealed it. Okay, and this is what I use. This is my Bisquick. It's called Quick Mix. But anything you use for Bisquick, you can use for this. Pancakes, muffins, anything. If you go on BettyCrocker.com and search under Bisquick, hundreds, hundreds of recipes, and this is a, a great substitution for it. Okay. Yes. Oh, don't use all okay, hands. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, okay, what we're going to do two. We're doing two cakes tonight, and they're basically the same. The difference is one is actually going to have just regular sour cream, like a prepared sour cream. The other one is actually a sour cream, dehydrated sour cream. That way you can taste the difference. Now, the dehydrated sour cream, if you read the instructions, it says you need to prepare it and put it in the refrigerator two hours before, which I did. So it's not going to behave any different um, than a regular sour cream, but I thought it would be kind of fun. That way you could kind of see with the, with the texture, if, there, if you see a texture difference or taste a texture difference. So that's going to be the difference. So I have my quick mix. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And I, my two helpers are dying to help. And because the air was taken out of it, I'm gonna have to kind of go like this with it. So this streusel cake calls for two cups of biscuit or quick mix.
But as someone told me earlier today, if someone's really hungry, they still don't know. And I'm like, they get little like kids. <laughs> toward the camera. Can okay, you see it's clumpy? It's clumpy. Well, that's fine, because it does, that does happen. So, what you do is I have a strainer, and I have a bowl. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out two, because we only need one egg for this, so I'm going to do two tablespoons of the powder and two tablespoons of water. I'm not going to put the water in the strainer. I'm going to put just the eggs, okay? <laughs> And then I'm going to strain it, and we'll add the water to it, and then we actually, you can actually add that as part of your mix without the water. In any of your recipes, and we'll talk about that a little bit more, is the powder can actually go in the mix. Okay? Into There's the dry a rule mix. to it. There's a rule. But and I'll, we will talk about the rules. But we're going to get this in the oven. So... I'm going to take two tablespoons oops, of the powder, and I'm measuring it now. And then for this, it's just really easy. You can just go like this, and it comes right through it. See it popping up now? So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I'm trying to make it go quicker. Yeah, I usually smush my food with a fork. I mean, yeah. with a spoon. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Yes. It says one, it should say two. Okay, so here is what it looks like now. Oh, After wait. it's been... Not see how fine enough. it looks? It looks like you're just a regular powder now. So now that's my one A without the water. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to dump it in here, just like that. Okay, then I've got one more to go, and then I go add the water. And you'll know, like say, someone asked me once, they said, well, how do you get it, what if you forget to add the water? I'm like, if you bake, you will know, because the consistency of the dough won't be the same without it. And you're like, oh, it can't be a little drier, so you need to add the water. You'll find out very quickly. Like when I make chocolate chip cookies, you know, there's a certain consistency. Um, with dough, with, um, you know, anything that you add flour and eggs and salt to that you're used to, there's always a certain consistency. 
Okay. Are they killing? No, no. <laughs> Just like at home. <laughs> <laughs> they get baked out. Oh, and now we're going to add two tablespoons of water. What do you need? Oops. 
We're going to learn how to make sour cream out of powdered milk. What kind of vegetables are you I'm sorry? What kind of vegetables are you Just any kind. It could vegetable be. Vegetable oil? Or it shortening. Like Crisco. Or Crisco. It could even be, you know, your, your typical, you know, on sale type thing. I'm a couponer. Can you tell? Everything can buy on sale. It is, the cake itself is two cups of the Bisquick, and this is, <laughs> and the Bisquick quick mix recipe was up there, okay, and then a half, half a cup of water or milk, um, two tablespoons of sugar, white sugar, one egg, so either if you don't want to go the dehydrated egg route, you don't have to. So you can just do one egg, but if you do dehydrated egg, it's one tea, two teaspoons of water and two teaspoons of tablespoons of um, egg powder and egg and water. And then one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. This is I think I put too much spray on. And one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. And one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. Did I say that? Yes. So here's the streusel. Half a cup. What's your mouth? You guys, do you not all have the recipe? No. It's not on this paper. It's not on the This for the. The quick mix is not the. Oh, not the recipe. You'll get it in your emails. It's in the PowerPoint. <laughs> the streusel itself is just one tablespoon of cinnamon, one tablespoon of brown sugar. Or yeah, that's it. Or if you want white sugar instead of brown sugar, you can swap the two depending. My kids, my husband, they love it. So do I actually. And that's it. You're back, I can see it. Yeah, it'll go in, it'll be in your handouts. So why that? 
is baking, I'm going to show you how to take your recipes and convert them into mixes. Um, to me, that's just something that I prefer. I don't want to reinvent the wheel, so that's what we're going to talk about right now. What's that? She does the hard work. Okay, so this is this is the original streusel cake that I used. I put it into what I call first generation, which is I took out all of the dry products, the sugar, the flour, the salt, and all of that, and we put that together, mix it all up, and put it in a bag or a jar or where you want to store it. Okay, but then I realized I got into I wanted something easier, something faster. This is where the quick mix came into. And that's what we, um, we talked about just a few minutes ago. Okay, how to convert a recipe. It's easier than you think. Um, a lot of channels I mean, work, so I should try lots of Go for 25 minutes. Um, what you first do, first step, pick your most used recipes, the ones that you like the most. I was a little nervous with this, to tell you the truth at first. Like I said, I read the book, was all excited, and put it away because I got overwhelmed by it. Um, so I went the easy route. I picked my recipes like baking recipes. So I'm like, okay, if the cookie doesn't look pretty, it probably will still taste good. My kids will still eat it. You know, so I went the baking route first. I looked at my cakes. I looked at my cookies. I looked at all of those options first, and those are the ones I used at first. You can use any of your recipes, though. You can use chili, you can use stew, you can use your soups, anything. This, these, are, these are the rules you can go by. This is art. This actually is what I did. Um, like here, you can use any of these for anything. Okay, so you pick out the dry ingredients from your recipes. That's the very first thing you do. You look at it and go, okay, how do I do this? Oh, you know, I need to do this is my chocolate chip cookie recipe. Okay, I love this recipe. Um, this is the original that I'm showing you. We go through chocolate chip cookies like you would not believe in my house. So it's just so nice to be able to pull out a mix that I can, yes, that I that I can just put, add a few items and then add a few items and um, I'm away with it. Chocolate chip. This is one. You can tell my kids were helping, huh? <laughs> they got all excited, but we got the sealer. Can you tell? So this is for long-term storage because the air has been taken out of it. It's been sucked right out of it. Okay. And then my original one, well, kind of, I didn't bring it, but it kind of looked like this, which was just a Ziploc freezer bag, and I stuck it in my freezer. But I don't know about you, but my freezer can only hold so much. So, um... Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We are going, I'm going to show you how to do this real quick. And now that the kids are here, it's going to be a lot nicer. Okay. I'm going to take all of the dry items, and I'm going to put them in my bowl. So, first it's flour, and it's two and eight cups of flour. I know this recipe by heart. So, I'm going to have to look. Okay. Two and eight. I take my flour out. I take my baking soda, which is a teaspoon. Okay, I'm just adding, I'm just taking all of the dry ingredients. I take my salt. I'm not a good salt pourer, so I always have to pour it for something else. Salt. It's exactly what's up here. One teaspoon. Okay? So I've already done the flour, the salt, the baking soda, um, and I need to do the sugars. So it's one cup of, half a cup of white sugar. This, this one is the backwards recipe for, for the sugars. And then one cup of brown sugar. So I'm taking Michael. all of this stuff. I'm putting it in my bowl. My and then I'm going to mix, mix it all in there. 
So it's like you're baking your cookies. And this is just for one serving. So if you wanted to multiply it by several, you could. <clears throat> what makes it faster? Coming over here.
Oh, is there one in there? Okay, let me explain to you what you're asking. 
she's saying if you are making a mix from your own recipe and right. you're making like four of them all together, right. how do you know how much oh, dry mix? Oh, I see what you're saying. What I do at that point is I put it all in one bag and store it all in one bag and then on the front I say for one serving this is what you want to do. What's great about this, whatever, if you go this avenue, like I did, I cut it. I can reseal this back. I'll show you. <clears throat> According to your original serving recipe. Yeah, I would, you would have to add one cup plus one fourth of a cup plus a half a cup by all of your different ingredients. No, there's, yes. yeah, what they're saying is if you made four, uh, four, don't do that. <laughs> If you made if you made if you made a batch of four, right, and you wanted to put it in bags, then how like how would you know how much to put in there? So what they're saying is you would have to add up how much flour, how much for one batch. Yes, 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 yes. And then you would know yes. how many cups. Yes, absolutely. You if you're to doing it from your own, if you're doing it from you know a book, it'll tell you. Like when you get your recipes from me, it'll have a master mix. Okay. recipe and it'll tell you for one recipe like for instance the quick bread that I made tonight I made three kinds of quick bread all from a master mix from um, I doubled the master mix and made six loaves and it said use three and a half cups of the dry mix and one and a third cup of water da 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 da, da. so I knew how much that I need to do so if you're using a regular mix it'll give you kind of an idea otherwise she's right you would have to add up mm -hmm. For one, for one recipe, how much, you know, how many cups of dry mix is that it was. So, so it depends you would know. on how, what avenue you want to go. What I, I only do that for my rolls. And for, for rolls and cinnamon rolls and things like that. But for my cookies and everything, I do a single, like what you see here, a single thing. Because that's where I use it the most. Um, for my cinnamon rolls, I, I'm so used to, when I was in the singles board many years ago, uh, we had a gentleman who made these phenomenal cinnamon rolls, and I went over and he showed me how he did it. And he, he actually, this is what he was doing. He actually was making his own mixes. So that's why I, I probably still do it like that um, for those types of rolls and um, my cinnamon rolls and so forth. But yes, you have to add it all up and write and then write on there what you need to. Does that make sense? I see some people going like this, or it's too much work. If you're going to do multiple like that, put it in all in one bag, it is a lot more work to me, I think so, than if you do individual. So that's how you want it. These books, I don't want to discount these books, because you notice I do have a couple of them. This is the first book I bought. Then I, I bought this one too. And if you, I received this as a gift. How many of you have ever seen these gifts? You know, these are homemade gifts in a jar. These are perfect for this. Perfect. They've already done, you know, telling you exactly what to do. What's great about this, this one, and these that are actually made for this type of thing, is they tell you, um, they, they use the powder ingredients already. They're already using the powder milk. They're using the dehydrated eggs. They're using the dehydrated sour cream or vanilla, you know, that type of stuff. So if you want to go that avenue, you can. I did not because I wanted to be my own recipe. I wanted to use my own recipes. That's why. That is the only reason. But they actually have some very good um, points in there too. Okay. We're almost done. Mm -hmm. Oh, can you put that on? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this was my my this is my first generation, you saw my original recipe, this is what my first generation was, before I used any dehydrated products, because those kind of scared me. So I thought, I'll just do the easy part, which is taking all of the, the dry ingredients first, putting them in the mix, and going that avenue, and then adding my eggs and other stuff later. Then I got, um, I don't want to say smarter, <laughs> that's braver, you got braver. braver, and decided let's add the eggs, the dehydrated eggs, and some of these other items and see if it's a easier and if it really works. That was my thing. Does it really work? Does it really taste the same? Um, do the cookies look the same? Those types. Of, and they did. But it took a lot of 
much trial and error with the eggs, though. I will have to tell you that. Um, I keep now you, now you have all the kinks worked out for me. Yes, there you go. It had one egg. Did it say yolk or white? Yeah, yeah. It should have been. It should have been. Sorry. Whole egg. It should have been white. Egg it white. Said a whole egg and then egg yolk. One whole egg and one egg yolk. White or no? Both. Both. You're using one egg. I mean, one egg and one egg white. Okay. You're confusing me. You're confusing us. I'm sorry. So is that good? Does everyone get that? One whole egg, one egg white. Got it? Okay. The rules. These are things that we've talked a little bit here and there, but I want to make sure you understand them. Placing your flour in your freezer. This is what the recommendation from a lot of these books at the front is putting your flour in the freezer for two days. I do! I know the answer to this! Basically, um, I had it all, I was going to read the whole thing to you. It's like the explanation is like this big. You know? uh, but basically what it is, is, is for wheat, wheat flour. Because in wheat flour, there are certain things that are not killed. The oils and certain, um, what they call, hold on, I have the name of it, um, endosperm. That, and that stays with the wheat, okay, because that's healthy actually. But because of that, it makes it go bad faster. Um, but white flour doesn't have that problem. Okay? So white flour doesn't have that problem. Okay? So that is the only reason. That's it. So if you use flour a lot, there's no reason at all. That's true. Any flour has an expiration date. If you look, you buy flour, it always has an expiration date on it. And so if you, for wheat flour, they're saying if you put it in the freezer for two days, it actually gives the, your, the mix is a lot longer life shelf. Shelf life. Shelf life. <laughs> Can you tell them where my kids are? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're fine. Okay. Oh, okay. So um, white flour, no reason. No reason. Okay. So I thought that was interesting. Um, we've discussed that. Mix the eggs and the one cup of flour before you put it in the mix. Okay. You add, then you add it to the dry ingredients. Mix smaller portions as you test. You know, a lot of these books will say, especially the first one, will say, okay, here's the full blown recipe. 20 cups of this, 10, you know, thinking, oh, are you kidding me? You know, but then it, underneath it, it gives you a, te it gives you a smaller recipe. And it's a mini recipe, and it says use this first. So I did the exact same thing. I took that theory and did the exact same thing. I took my full recipe, um, not my full, I would half it, just to see if things would work. Um, my husband has seen so many cakes, because I was really having problems with the cakes and eggs. They just weren't working. And last night he came home, he's like, another cake? You know, so we've been through a lot of cakes. Um, but last night's cake was the cake that he will walk a mile for, was my thank you to him. <laughs> you need to, you are going to, there are times where you're probably going to go, this is horrible. I remember taking two cakes and go, boom, in the trash can. Mm -hmm. I knew the way they looked, I just dumped them. My kids were like, what did you do with the cake? They were a little disappointed. <laughs> but, um, so, you, you, you'll know if it doesn't work. <laughs> you'll know. That's why you want to use a smaller, um, smaller recipe. Take your recipe, put it in half, and try. You might also find adding additional things to it will help um, make it taste a little bit better if you want to. So it's a test. It's a testing phase. Believe me. Um, you, look, you can look anywhere on the internet. Google. I went and googled it. And there was over 550,000 hits for um, for um, making your own mixes at home. That's a lot. Um, you have all kinds of different blogs and sites are out there. You have the everydayfoodstorage.net. You have Pinterest. Tons on Pinterest. For those of you, I see some blank places. Um, for those of you who are on that, tons, tons of resources, tons of resources. So you can go on your, you can go on your computer. I'm a computer person, so that's usually where I go a lot. I'll just go and Google it uh, and 
it comes up with lots and lots of resources for you. So they're out there for you, and of course you have Debbie's um, knowledge. <laughs> okay. So when the yeah, so when the cookie, I'm not the cookies. When the cakes are done, that would be that would be part of your tasting, and you can taste that and see how you like it. You have any questions? Um, any other questions while I'm up here? Before you guys can make your mixes here, you showed a lot of the sweets. Yes, because that's where I started first. Okay, that's. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> when I come to your house, I only bake. Yeah. Um, so, but do, do you do a lot now that yes, a lot of soups, a lot of stews, a lot of um, chili. Do those seem to be easier? Because when I bake, I don't follow recipes. I just taste it and add stuff. I change all my recipes. Up. Okay. All of them. Okay. If you, my mother-in-law came to visit me one day. And I was making stew. And she's like, this is so good. She goes, can I have the recipe? I pull it out. And it has all these marks on it. Cross out and all these other things I've added. And she's like, there's no original recipe. <laughs> but it's good, right? That's all that matters. It's good. So that's what my recipes normally look like. And as a matter of fact, these right here is just some of the recipes that I, I want to convert. Okay, and this is just very small amount, but this is probably what I've come up with in the last two weeks. Um, of one side. Oh yeah, I, need, I forgot to do that. Onion soup mix, great. I mean, use lifting soup mix all the time. All the time. So it's a great one to put um, there. Taco seasoning. I put a lot of my seasonings together. For like tacos and fajitas and you know all of that kind of stuff because I use it a lot um, for, for meats and things like that. So that way I'm not a, I'm cheap. Sorry. I'm, so I don't have to buy it. I make it myself because I have tons of spices, so I'm going to use what I have. Any other questions? Are you excited? Yeah. yeah. To go make your own? <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Denise. I don't know how. Did you get it? Just close it.